Pranam from Vijay Nilakantan. As always, extremely glad to address the members of Darbar, a platform initiated to revive the cultural heritage of Kannur, initiated by Carnatic musicians Vidushi Jayasri Rajiv and Vidwan Rajiv Kumar, along with the support of like-minded artists and rasikas. Across the globe, majority of the wildlifers talk only about nature and wildlife conservation, mainly about the animals in the protected areas, that's national park, wildlife sanctuaries and reserve forest. When I started spending more time in my native Thaliparamba, I felt the need of urban wildlife conservation. Urban wildlife is not a new ecological concept. Rapid urbanization and habitat modification has redefined the whole thought process. And it's a time to ponder and act on urban wildlife conservation with a serious attitude. Urban wildlife is a term that has been coined to describe wildlife that has adapted their lifestyle to living in the concrete jungles of cities and suburban neighborhoods. Urban wildlife is a broad term to describe those species of animals that are living in a human dominated landscape. So kind of sharing that same landscape that we humans share. As I mentioned earlier, with rapid urbanization and encroachment in forest lands, wildlife habitat has been greatly disturbed. Environment and wildlife experts should now start talking more about the urban wildlife ecology and a concept where wildlife and human beings can coexist and thus it aims to conserve the native wildlife for us the Kanu district. Some examples of urban wildlife include kites, snakes, jackals, wild boars, monkeys and other animal forms including insects, fishes, porcupines, uh, monitor lizards, birds, and even civet cats. Such animal communities are accustomed to human presence. They utilize food resources provided by humans, such as garbage and bit of agriculture products. These are generalistic species which can adopt to varied habitats and food preferences. They have high tolerance to human-induced disturbances and has the ability to change their behavioral pattern and habits in accordance with human activities. It's a common misconception that wildlife exists only in forested areas away from cities and towns. Even the densest of the cities have wild animals. As I told you earlier, industrialization, indiscriminate construction of buildings, quarrying of hills, increased pollution levels, deforestation, lack of awareness among the urban and rural population, unchecked poaching have taken a major, major toll on the survival of native flora and fauna. And Kanur is not an exception in these years. There has been a distinct rise in human wildlife interaction over the years, even in and around Kanur. I have been associated with wildlife for quite a long time now. Leopards are being spotted near human settlements, striking panic amongst locals 
and so many small mammals and reptiles are falling prey to automobiles on the road. It, I feel very sorry for it. There have also been so many cases of unscientific capture and release of reptiles by untrained amateur handlers. And I'm happy Forest Department has made certain changes to it now, bringing certified rescuers to catch snakes. With increasing human pressures on urban wildlife and the fast depleting natural resources, it is imperative to study urban wildlife communities in order to understand the human wildlife interactions or human wildlife conflict and their areas, direct or indirect impacts of human induced pressures on native and rare wildlife. As I mentioned to you earlier, Leopards are the most adopted wild animal and learn to live with humans in urban Mumbai. Because I was working there with Royal Palms Golf and Country Club near to RA Colony, near Sanjay Gandhi National Park. City of Mumbai has one of the largest protected urban areas in the world called Sanjay Gandhi National Park. And it has one of the highest leopard density in India. The Indian leopards spotted in Mumbai have started killing stray dogs, pigs and there was a report of more than 10 people being killed by the leopard. Now another case of rhesus macaque. This is very common species of monkeys found in India. And there is a documentary produced by National Geographic Channel as Monkey Thieves. That's basically in Jaipur and in Delhi. Monkey Thieves documentary is based on urban macaques daily routine within the pink city of Jaipur and they are living close to human. The urban elephants found mostly in South India. There is another class example, okay, Assam and the Northeast India. Even in Kannur district near to Aralam, we have this issue. Indians or India's wild elephants are endangered and threatened by habitat loss and degradation. Because of expanding human population, conflicts between humans and elephants are increasing, mostly during the night in South India, where wild Indian elephants entering human village and farms. Now my favorite subject, snakes are the most common reptile in India and also among the most misunderstood of all animals. There are more than 20 to 25 species of non-venomous and venomous snakes found living in and around the urban areas and also responsible for most of the killer bites in India. We call it Big Four. Four of them, as I mentioned Big Four, Indian Cobra, so scale wiper, crate and Russell's wiper. Now, if you look at you know, Kannur or even the other areas, black kite is one of the most common medium sized bird of prey distributed across Indian subcontinent. The black kites are opportunistic hunters and more likely to scavenge and leftover foods around the urban areas of India. Pune is one of the best places to spot this raptor near the riverbed and spend a lot of time soaring and gliding in thermals in search of food. My favorite state Karnataka. Karnataka state is a land of divers and has a rich diversity of flora and fauna. There are over 20 wild species of animals that have been living close to human settlements, mainly mongoose and even um, uh, I would say ready mongoose, especially on that front, or Indian brown mongoose. Common palm civet and small Indian civet 
or two rare animals that can be found in urban areas of India where it frequents gardens, trees and roof. See, urban wildlife is in the rise in Karnataka and Asian palm civet also found uh, uh, you know, in uh, Karnur, which is also called the toddy cat, is one of the most common member of urban wildlife in Karnataka. Now, another most important uh, snake of my interest, the cannibal king cobra. The king cobra is the world's longest venomous snake found predominantly in forests of South India and most of the time rescued from village of, villages of Kerala. King cobra populations have dropped in some of South Indian areas and Agumbe Rainforest Research Station is managing world's first radio telemetry project on the king cobra. Now you would have seen one of uh, WhatsApp videos, Indian lions of Gujarat are the newest member of urban wildlife. Recently a pride of eight lions roaming around human habitat in Junagadh. Gujarat lions are frequently sighted on the streets of Junagadh near Gir mountains or Girmar mountains and often come close to residential areas in search of livestock. The most common city birds of India includes Indian sparrow, rock pigeon, sunbirds, parakeets, uh, then we have coil, a lot of plenty of birds. One can also spot variety of birds around the houses and society like kingfisher, black kites, dove. So, there are so many flying insects in India and few of them are known for one of the most painful bites and stings such as the wasp and the honeybees. Urban insects include butterflies, dragonflies, wasp, uh, grasshopper, leaf insects, then centipede, millipede and crickets. And other common uh, urban wild animals of India include Indian jackal, uh, striped hyena, unfortunately you know, we don't have it here, at least in Kandor, antelopes, pangolin, wild cats and Indian fox. See, these are all the things what I say because I have traveled across India. There are also giant Indian squirrels, few wild cats, large reptiles and porcupines, very common in Karnataka. Now it's very clear what is urban wildlife. Again, let me repeat, urban wildlife animal communities consist of species that utilize human dominated ecosystems. Although urban species vary in their use and exploitation of developed areas, they all come into contact with humans either in cities or in the woodland urban interface. Wild animals are increasingly coming into contact with people as cities continue to sprawl into undeveloped regions. Urban suburban and now there is a new terminology that is used exurban growth can increase edge habitat creating more opportunity for humans and wildlife to come in contact human welfare and safety depend on a thorough understanding of urban wildlife and their interactions with the anthropogenic landscape Pets and livestock are often most at risk from interactions with or the conflict with urban wildlife and may require extra precautions to ensure their protection from native predators. Urban wildlife research can seek out solutions to human wildlife conflicts to minimize property damage and safely risk while still preserving intact the wildlife populations. While India has made 
significant strides in protecting wildlife through area based and species specific programs in rural and remote geographies. The potential of urban India in wildlife conservation is still underestimated and needs urgent and creative actions. And I am pretty happy Indian forest officers, particularly officers from uh, Kerala, they have recognized at least the need for urban wildlife conservation. Now, as far as I am concerned, the major animal that gets affected because of human wildlife conflict in urban area is snake. That's where you know, we have more than 40, 45 volunteers in and around Kannur, you know, located in different prominent towns to rescue snakes. So, if you find a snake anywhere in, in your compound or in your house, definitely you don't need to have a sort of enmity or a conflict among humans and the animal. Just you know, take up the call and call the members of Kannur Wildlife Rescuers. And there are more than 37 to 40 almost full-time volunteers risking their life to save the urban wildlife. So urban wildlife is one of the most unique way of protecting wildlife. See, for the next generation, you know, it is not possible for always, you know, to go and interact with the, you know, the wild animals after spotting them in the uh, uh, national parks or protected areas. So, it is better to get a feel of wildlife, urban wildlife, you know, being living amongst them. So, a coexist attitude has to come from the most educated uh, and literate uh, people which we cannot expect much from the snakes or other animals. See, particularly in Kannur district, what I found was, you know, we being uh, human beings, we think we are the most superior creatures, you know, on the planet. It's there everywhere, but at least, you know, Kannurians, you know, should never, you know, try to uh, pretend, you know, in that manner, because, you know, we are more cultured, more educated, more exposed to all these things. So, how an individual like me or like you can conserve the wildlife, urban wildlife is very, very, very important. So, this session, you know, another 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we will have a questionnaire um, sort of an interaction wherein how we all could volunteer to conserve the urban wildlife. So, again, let me tell you, this is not a new ecological concept. This has been there for quite a long time. But unfortunately, due to the pressure from our own interference, you know, there is too much pressure on the urban wildlife to, for their survival. For us, it is survival is secondary. For them, that is the most important aspect. So, let us try to understand the urban wildlife and let us try to See how best we could coexist with the animals around us, whether in Thalpramba or Kannur or Talsheri, anywhere in Kannur district. Every day we get a lot of calls. You know, it could be stray dogs, it could be mangoes, it could be kitten, it could be snakes, you know, fallen in the well, you know, snakes entangled in the fishing net or with the normal nets. There is plenty of urban wildlife cases being attended by, you know, the Kannur Wildlife Rescuers or, you know, the organizations like uh, Prasad Fans Associations, Mark, Eagle Eye, there are plenty of such selfless organizations who does a tremendous work on conserving urban wildlife. I salute each and every um, uh, conservationist in Kannur who, who takes it as a pride, you know, to conserve uh, urban wildlife. So, let us have a um, uh, discussion for next 15-20 minutes. All your questions, you know, you can share it with me. Again, as I always say, I am not an expert in any of these things. I try to learn. I am a seeker. So, if there is anything, you know, which I am not sure about it, definitely I will get in touch with the 
uh, experts and then revert to you. So let's try to understand and conserve wildlife, mainly urban wildlife. Thank you.